Okay, uh, welcome everyone to uh, yet another virtual City Council meeting, but uh, certainly coming off a uh, very robust weekend of uh, budget deliberations, as is often the case. We were together all day Friday and all day Saturday, and uh, a tremendous efforts and a tremendous uh, result. So thank you to all councillors and staff and administration for uh, uh, putting in such big effort all weekend long. And uh, so we're right back at it here, although the meeting doesn't look like it'll be too lengthy. So with that, uh, first item of business, Madam Clerk. Roll call, Your Worship, and I would report that all members of council are present. Thank you. Next item, please. Um, do, do we want to make a statement regarding our Ms. Councilor Loreggio? We could do that. I was going to do it under announcements, okay. but it would make yeah, yeah it would no, it would make more sense at this point, uh, um, Madam Clerk. Um, and uh, some members of the public may may be aware that uh, news release did go out from the uh, City of Brandon today, uh, announcing the uh, resignation of Councillor John Moreggio, effective yesterday. Uh, John has been uh, dealing with a health issue for a little while and in his uh, own statement did uh, indicate that the residents of uh, um, Meadows Waverly Ward number five uh, you know should have a counselor that can provide undivided attention to uh, uh, their needs and he's not able to quite do that at this uh, point in time so he has uh, has resigned he did stick with us right to the end he was uh, Involved, uh, he he was involved in a virtual capacity uh, all weekend uh, through the budget, uh, which ended Saturday night, and then he uh, uh, submitted his resignation to uh, effective January 31st, which was yesterday. So I know I can speak on behalf of all council that we're saddened to have to accept that uh, resignation. John was a very ardent uh, uh, voice for his ward for. Uh, a uh, total of eight years and a uh, great contributor around the council table, uh, always very passionate about any issues that he uh, took on and was always a very uh, well prepared and uh, thoughtful, uh, productive individual. So uh, we certainly wish John well and all things that uh, lie ahead. So that would explain why uh, the city clerk has indicated that all members of uh, Council are present, uh, given that we are uh, down one uh, councillor at this point uh, from that resignation. And uh, as um, under the Municipal Act, any time there is a vacancy on a municipal council with more than 12 months remaining in a, in a term, um, uh, the municipal council is obliged to hold a by-election. So that will occur, and our uh, legislative services uh, Department and senior elections officer will be pulling those details uh, together uh, uh, fairly soon, and that information will be dispatched out to the public. In the meantime, all of those that uh, uh, all of us have made this look rather uh, glamorous and exciting, and uh, you'd like to uh, join us on on council. But all seriousness, it's a you know. Uh, very uh, important and uh, rewarding function, and we'd certainly uh, encourage a lot of people to um, give it some consideration. You could probably call uh, any councillor that you may uh, know on our council to get a few tidbits on what uh, what entails to be a councillor, or certainly information from uh, uh, the clerk's department as well. So uh, thank you for uh, prompting me to do that announcement now, uh, Madam Clerk. Uh, I'll maybe just pause for a second to see if any councillors, I'm not expecting each councillor to uh, make comments, but I never like to prevent any if there was something that I missed. Councillor Fawcett. Yeah, thank you through your worship. Uh, having spent eight years with uh, Councillor Reggio on the, the board, it's it's actually been a, a lot of fun because you know Johnny doesn't, uh, or Councillor Reggio, never, never held back on what he wanted to say. And uh, the one thing I always appreciated is is John would speak the language of the coffee shop right at the council table, and he always did that really well. And uh, we will miss that voice because it was uh, necessary at the at the table. And uh, uh, you know, we'll see him around shortly. We hope. Uh, 
because he'll still have lots to tell us. So, but we will miss him, and we miss his his uh, general man of the of the people attitude that he had. It was well appreciated. Thank you very much. That's uh, nicely said, uh, Councillor Fawcett. And I think I've got Councillor Dejarle uh, uh, up. So go ahead, please. Very briefly, I echo uh, the sentiments uh, Councillor Fawcett um, just provided. Uh, John will be missed. Um, he and I didn't always see eye to eye, for, and that's uh, that's I think should be expected on on council. Uh, the fact is, at the end of the day, uh, we we showed a lot of respect for one another. And um, what I will miss most about John actually is um, is some of his uh, some of his inquisitive questioning. Uh, you could tell that he had a journalist background, and um, I would often be um, quite amazed at some of the ways in which he would approach um, certain <laughs> conversations and the things that I wouldn't think about. So he really was an asset to council. He will be missed, and um, my uh, my thoughts uh, are with John. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Dejarle, and and again, I, I know that every member of council would. Uh, uh, be able to uh, uh, impart their own stories and their own relationship with uh, Councillor uh, Loreggio. And uh, I know I go way back with John long before uh, we were on council together. And I know certainly uh, people like uh, Councillor Lukey and, and Cameron and the like have had a also professional relationship with them. And so there'll be a time in the future when we uh, can gather together that we'll be able to um, you know, do a more fitting uh, uh, tribute to, to John and his work on council. So uh, in the meantime, uh, we wish him well. Hope that he's listening in and, and watching, and uh, we'll talk to him real soon. So uh, thank you very much for that. And the next item, Madam Clerk. A motion to adopt this evening's agenda, Your Worship. Thank you. Uh, give for a mover. Moved by Councillor Cullen, seconded by Councillor Parker. Any changes or additions? No. Seeing none, we'll call for the question then. All those in favor? Opposed? That is carried. Next item, please. Confirmation of the minutes of the regular meeting of council held on January 18th. Moved by Councillor Cameron. Mm -hmm. Seconded by Councillor Desjarlais. Any errors or omissions? Hearing none, call for the question then. All those in favor? Opposed? And that is carried. Thank you. Next item, please. The order of committee reports, Your Worship. We weren't made aware of any, and of course, uh, Council's been very busy with uh, uh, budget matters, but uh, in the event there were any verbal reports, we'll be glad to take them now. Okay, not seeing any. We can move on to the next item, please. The order of inquiries, Your Worship. Again, similarly, uh, given our budget process, there weren't any inquiries that uh, had come in uh, uh, by today uh, formally, but sometimes things arise uh, uh, throughout a council day, and if there were uh, some uh, late inquiries, we'd, uh, we'd be happy to take those now. And Councillor Brown. Uh, you're still on mute there, Councillor Brown. No. No. Once more. Hello. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Um, I don't expect an answer for this one today, but. Uh, at the new school on Maryland Avenue in the morning and most likely at uh, 3.30, the traffic is really bad. It, it jams up in the traffic circle and up and down 9th Street. And I don't know what the solution is, but I'm hoping uh, somebody from traffic is looking into this. Okay, thank you, uh, Councillor Brown. Um, again, I think this has been brought to our attention. I think both our traffic engineers and the city police have been working on, I think, in conjunction with the school division and the uh, uh, leadership of the 
of the school itself. Uh, so we'll see how they're coming along with that. I think there was a bit of a issue that the school had had uh, designed an on-site uh, uh, drop-off zone that was uh, designed for people to do that and people haven't caught on to using that. Uh, at least that was one of the uh, issues that I, I had read, but we will uh, get some more feedback from uh, our administration and uh, get back to you on that one. Sure. And unless uh, Mr. Hammond had anything else that he could advise uh, on this one. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Nothing uh, to advise at this time. I know the uh, Traffic and Engineering Department has been working in conjunction with BPS and the, and the school on this issue, as you mentioned. And I know there has been some, uh, some measures taken place to improve traffic flow. But we will report back to Councillor Brown with a full update. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hammond. Okay, and I didn't see any other hands up with any other inquiries. So apparently not, and so we can move on to the next item, please. The order of announcements, Your Worship. Any announcements? Okay, not seeing any hands coming up. So again, these days we have certainly less events to announce uh, than we'd like for sure, but uh, often there are other things, so that's, that's just fine. We'll move on to the next item, please. Under the order of general business, Your Worship, a, an application to the Heritage Conservation Grant Program for the Stone Fence Restoration Phase 3. Okay, um, we do have a fairly good report on it, but I'm uh, never quite sure sometimes uh, uh, administration were, were uh, planning on making a, a bit of a presentation, so I wasn't sure, Mr. Hammond, if that was uh, occurring or if we are just going off the report. Uh, I'm not. Oh, Mr. Nickel is putting up his hand, Your Worship. Very good. Uh, Ryan Nickel is just under his uh, uh, department, so we'll let uh, Ryan give us a few highlights. Just uh, very quickly, Your Worship, uh, through you to Council. Uh, as Council is aware, there was two previous phases of the heritage uh, wall that were repaired on 17th Street, so this is the third and last phase which is good news, it takes a while to repair the wall. And from a timing perspective, it's uh, it's fairly good because we do have a developer actively looking to develop the lands around the fence area. So fixing it now concurrently with the construction of site would really clean up uh, that corner and it was included in the council budget. And this is just a requirement of the grant program to make our application. That's why the recommendation is a little bit lengthy. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nickel. If you just hang on in case there are uh, questions, uh, Councilor Shaboye has her hand up. I'm not sure if it's to make the motion or ask questions. So go ahead, Councilor Shaboye. Uh, to ask the question, Your Worship. Yep. yep, go right ahead then. Yeah. Um, has the developer been made aware about the responsibilities of having a heritage fence right next to their development? Uh, you know, because I wouldn't want to see anything happen to a fence that we put a lot of resources into uh, getting damaged when uh, you know the site is going to become a construction site. Uh, just want to know if you've had that conversation with him. Your we Worship, to Councillor Shaboy, uh, this item has been flagged for our team, so not myself personally, but certainly the the people who are managing the permit process. And uh, just like a city asset, I think we do have plans to do an inspection before construction starts. Um, so we can have a sense of the condition and then as we work on it hopefully and improve it uh, it doesn't get damaged uh, during construction there was also an engineer's report done by the builder um, regarding the separation from the wall to verify that they could do the construction without adversely impacting the wall thank you thank you um, any other questions of mr nickel uh, before we ask for a motion on this and I think uh, Council is quite familiar with this. We've uh, done another a number of phases. Uh, Councilor Cameron, go ahead. Thank you, Your Worship. I'm going to move forward with the motion, if that's okay. Yes, please do. Thank you. Uh, it's a rather lengthy one, but whereas the City of Brandon is the owner of the Municipal Heritage Fence, located in the 100 block of 17th Street, Brandon, Manitoba, known as the Stone Fence, now therefore the, the Council of the City of Brandon duly assembled resolves as follows. 
that the city of Brandon make application to the Manitoba Sport, Culture, and Heritage for a grant under the Heritage Resource Conservation Grant Program for an amount of up to $16,403.65 for the purpose of restoring a portion of the Stone Fence Municipal Heritage Site. And further, that the Council of the City of Brandon recognizes the full financial implications from the development of the project and acknowledges that the provincial government will not be responsible for any further financial assistance other than the grant applied for and further that the city the council of the city of brandon guarantees that there are adequate funds available to complete the project and continue to maintain the structure thank you and seconder please councillor parker i believe um who wish to speak uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, this is a project that um, has gone through the Municipal Heritage Advisory Committee, um, of which Councillor Parker and I are a part of, and uh, it's something that the committee supports, and, and we look forward to keeping this piece of heritage uh, in good and, and operable condition in the city. Thank you very much. Um, other discussion? Anybody else would like to speak to the matter? Not seeing any others, and I think we're probably ready for the question then. All those in favor? Opposed? That is carried. Thank you very much. Next item, please. Is the sub pit, sump pit installation regulation to the building bylaw, Your Worship? Very good. And I think we have uh, Chief Building Inspector Murray Fisher on the on the uh, meeting with us so he could probably come on and give us uh, uh, a few highlights they've done some uh, consultation on this and uh, uh, it'll be good to hear his report uh, good evening uh, your worship and council um, so the goal of this regulation is um, in essence to divert water that would otherwise go to the stormwater treatment plant and um, pre uh, prevent an excessive amount of water during high water events uh, or high water table and that sort of thing to be diverted to our water treatment plant, um, thus reducing the possibility that there could be um, sewage backups in people's basements uh, during these types of events. Winnipeg has had a similar regulation in place since about 1990. And Regina's had a very similar one in place since uh, 2017. Our department's been working on this regulation since about 2015. So this isn't something that's kind of was put together very quickly. It's a very uh, thought out, methodical process um, with a lot of um, uh, redundant safety measures in place should a person's um, house be left without power. Um, the method would uh, the method of this regulation would allow the diversion of water into the sewer system and prevent further backups. And um, also includes an alarm system should the water reach a, a high level, alerting the homeowner. So at this point, I'll take any questions if there are any. Um, before I uh, take some questions, I, I know that you did have a uh, good consultation session virtually not too long ago uh, you know primarily with uh, with the industry uh, builders and plumbing contractors I know at minimum myself and Councillor Cullen sat in on this and it, it sounded like it went quite well uh, from my vantage point it seemed like pretty good feedback from uh, the industry and uh, uh, would you maybe mind providing uh, more information or what kind of feedback you got or if you if you did receive more feedback after that? Uh, well, actually, uh, after the event, uh, we did have um, quite, quite a lot of positive feedback. We had people requesting for a copy of the regulation. We had to decline because we it, of course, hadn't been passed by council. We don't like putting out regulations before um, they're actually put into force. Um, we've had people that weren't in attendance ask for a copy of the uh, presentation itself which we did post on our on our website. And even after this does go live, what we'll do is um, we'll give contractors and builders 
some leeway. Um, if we do an inspection and we don't see these in place, they'll get one warning. Um, so they are aware of that. But generally, contractors and builders are actually pretty receptive to it. They understand that this is a need. Um, other jurisdictions are doing it already. So it's. I don't think it comes as huge surprise to a lot of developers. Thanks for that. We've got uh, Councillor uh, Cullen and then Councillor Cameron. So go ahead, please. Thank you, Your Worship, uh, through you to our presenter. Murray, the, uh, this is uh, uh, for new construction, basically. Not saying that anybody that uh, uh, wouldn't uh, want to install a, a, a pit in their basement because they were having troubles uh, would still have to follow the same regulation. But uh, basically, this this means that now uh, every house that uh, that is constructed in Brannon would have to follow this uh, this this process, so that uh, again, uh, with the the uh, if on my understanding is correct, is so that we can divert the water from the uh, that would normally be going down into our our wastewater system or our sewer system and overwhelming that. So it would be pumped out into the backyard so that uh, that it, it wouldn't end up in that uh, that sewer system. But maybe you could just touch on those those two things. It's it's and it's not mandatory for somebody that doesn't have one now happen to put it in, but it is mandatory for new construction. Uh, and uh, this gives us a regulation of how it should be handled in the future should someone decide to put it in. Yeah, through your worship to uh, Councillor Cullen. What this regulation um, specifically regulates is the installation of some pits in brand new homes, as you had mentioned. And should somebody decide to install a sump pit in their home voluntarily, um, it would govern that as well. Um, there are two separate designs because um, we're aware of the fact that not all homes do have floor drains. Not all homes have weeping tile or um, foundation uh, drainage systems, so we do provide um, special provisions for those situations, um, allowing homeowners. And we do recognize the fact that some homeowners last some homeowners last summer after our heavy rains did install these voluntarily, which is good. And um, we do like the, seeing these systems versus having them go straight to um, a home's um, floor drain. And as you do mention, uh, this um, we should expect every home where the permit has been taken out starting tomorrow should have these installed in the homes. In fact, there are some newer homes that already do have these a system very similar installed, um, usually upon the request of the home builder or the homeowner. But generally, um, it would be if somebody's wanting to put one in, it would be their it'd be their choice to put one in if they're doing one after the fact. Thank you. And Councillor Cameron. Thank you, Your Worship. Through you to uh, Mr. Fisher. Thanks very much for the presentation, uh, Mr. Fisher. Just wondering if you could speak briefly to, um, if uh, for residents, you know, maybe that are are thinking about this. There's an element of the the regulation as well that looks after how water's discharged. Correct. Um, like there there is an element that they have to ensure that dis water is discharged away from neighboring residences. And then ultimately, my other question would be, is after this has passed, if residents were interested in installing one, how would they go about finding out more information? Um, through your worship to Councillor Cameron. So what we will be doing is as soon as we see the first one installed is we're going to actually put out a informational video through social media on not only how these things look, but how they function. We do understand that there's some complexity to this. The homeowner will have a little bit of a learning curve in, in how they operate. And as far as the drainage goes, um, we would uh, that would be regulated on under our lot grading and drainage bylaw. Um, it would be no different than any other water. It, could, it, it won't be allowed to go onto your neighbor's property. It, won't be, it can't impact um, uh, your neighbor's house or their, or their drainage pattern. So, and the, the other additional um, uh, requirement would be a splash pad to protect the ground because the water does come out with some force out of that um, and out of that pipe, so it could cause damage to the to the ground without a splash pad in place. But certainly, we would address, and we have, we've addressed some complaints with people installing these and discharging them into the yard, and we have dealt with them 
We've also dealt with some of these where they're discharging in the winter and causing ice. So we do advise people to have a bypass so that during the winter months that they do actually discharge down into the storm sewer. In those instances, there's there's no other course of action other than to having it discharged through the sewer. Thank so you. Hope, yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Um, I don't see any other hands up for questions so far. So I think we might be ready for a motion. If somebody would like to make one, please. Councillor Cullen, go ahead. Thank you, Your Worship. I move that the sump, sump pit and pump installation regulation be approved. Seconder, please. Councillor Lupke, thank you. Who would wish to speak? Um, just that uh, I think that uh, since how that we've been entering into these uh, water events, uh, absolutely everything that we can do at this point uh, where we can uh, see if we can help out, uh, especially in the future. We know that uh, climate change is, is going to be with us for now for a long time. And so, uh, again, we may have made some of them, uh, design uh, um decisions in the past just because we didn't uh, we weren't facing these type of water events now we know that uh, this is uh, the new reality or the new uh, uh, conditions that we have to uh, uh, live with going forward so uh, this is just one of those uh, regulations now that we can change that going forward uh, we're more prepared for these uh, um, climate change or climate driven events and uh, the fact that we're going to have to live with these these uh, uh, high water rain events. Thank you. Uh, others wish to speak? Not seeing others, I, I will say uh, I did appreciate uh, sitting in on the uh, consultation session that uh, did have with the industry. It, it did occur to me that this was a fairly straightforward uh, uh, approach by our, our department. It didn't look to me like that they went you know, kind of overboard, like you didn't overspec this, uh, uh, this solution. And, you know, it is a solution that, well, there'll be a little bit of a cost added to uh, a new home and therefore, a, you know, a new home builder, a new homeowner, uh, you know, they're, they're, they will derive some long-term benefits, uh, both from their own, uh, specific installation, but as importantly, the fact that presumably everyone in the neighborhood has one, uh, and therefore, less likelihood of you know overrunning the uh, you know the sewer system in their neighborhood, which does uh, contribute to the uh, sewer backup uh, issues and even overland flooding. So uh, while there is a cost, I think there's a, a significant benefit you know uh, to the home uh, and property and and uh, uh, to each other's home. So I, I think this was a. a uh, reasonable and you know again the industry sounded like they were uh, quite positively on, on side I think they felt it was a relatively straightforward installation and and not uh, as I say over spec or kind of over overblown so I appreciated that uh, if there's not any uh, further questions or discussion then I think we're ready for the question all those in favor opposed that is carried. Next item, please. Is the application to subdivide a parcel of property located northeast of the First Street and Patricia Avenue East intersection? Very good. Um, Councilor Shaboye. Thank you, Worship. I move the application to subdivide parcel A located northeast of First Street and Patricia Avenue East be approved subject to the owner or successor meeting all other necessary conditions and requirements of the subdivision. And further, that the designated signing officers are authorized to sign and seal the final certificate of approval. Thank you. Mr. Seconder, please. Uh, uh, Councillor Brown, thank you. Uh, before I ask if the mover uh, wishes to speak, uh, uh, Mr. Nickel may want to uh, give us uh, a few tidbits on this. I think he does have his hand up. And uh, I believe this is our first subdivision under our new uh, authority, our new uh, system granted to us by the 
province. Uh, hope I didn't steal your thunder. You can elaborate on that, uh, Ryan, but uh, this will be a bit of a milestone, so I uh, really uh, do want Ryan to be able to come on. Uh, he's put a lot of work into uh, getting us uh, this authority, and so this hopefully will be something that can be celebrated. So go ahead, Ryan. Yeah, thank you, Your Worship. But yeah, it's uh, it's kind of anticlimactic, but it's a uh, it's certainly a big win for the city of Brandon, um, having the opportunity to approve our subdivisions. And this is a really good example of how it can really speed up the process, where it just gets conditional approval now, and uh, it doesn't have to go through the planning district. So it's good for the city, and it's good for our applicants. And anytime we can do things more efficiently, that's a positive thing. Um, and with this subdivision, this subdivision has been driven by the white lady slippers. That's what was explained in the letter of intent. Um, this was that land that was satisfied working cooperatively with the uh, NCC as well as the province of Manitoba. Um, so hopefully all things work out and it gets registered and the land will get transferred to the NCC so they can manage it. And as council recalls, there was a resolution of city council to donate some of the city held lands. So once that transfer goes through, we'll work on our transfer and then hopefully assemble that preserve area together and then uh, work with the NCC, the Nature Conservancy, as part of the committee to be stewards for the area. So the area is quite large. It's uh, 51 acres, uh, sorry, 51, uh, yeah, no, 51 acres, uh, and uh, the residual would be used for development as uh, part of the secondary plan for the area. Uh, and no conditions. We're trying to keep this one as simple as we can. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Nickel. Um, any questions of uh, Ryan before we uh, 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 debate the item, I, I suppose, and then ask for the question? Councilor Cameron? Thank you, Your Worship. Through you to Mr. Nickel. Um, just wondering if uh, there's an aspect of this uh, proposal that involves a uh, public consultation at some point um, or or opportunities for residents to interact with uh, either NCC or the city on it. Very worship uh, to Councillor Cameron. The goal is to have a, a public consultation event on the secondary plan uh, coming up here, hopefully within the next few months. Uh, but the goal first was to have some surety around this preserved area. I didn't want to kind of jump the gun and start engaging the public and then figure out things weren't working out for whatever reason. So this looks like it's moving forward, which is great. Uh, and then the goal would be to work with the province and the NCC to do a joint consultation where, we, where we're answering questions. So we're not engaging about the area. We need to figure that out first, but we certainly want people to be informed and have the opportunity to understand uh, the relationship between the development of land uses in the area and the preservation of the white lady slipper flower. That's excellent. Thank you. I'm not sure. No, Councillor DeJarley's hand is up, but it might have just been left up for the last vote. But if you have a question, go ahead. Oh, it's down. Okay, thank you. Um, other questions of Mr. Nickel? I am not seeing any. Um, Okay, then I'm just going to come back. Uh, did the mover wish to speak, Councillor Chaboy? Uh, yes, uh, thank you. And thank you, Ryan, and your team for all the work that you've done on this and being very responsible uh, to uh, work out in, uh, you know, agreements uh, on, on this uh, space that we're going to, going to be looking at for green space. Green space. Uh, if the citizens are wanting to know uh, what property we're talking about, it, it's, it's in the southeast corner of the Green Acres Ward, which is across from um, Crocus Plains, if you go to the very southeast corner of the city. And uh, it is approximately 132 acres, and, and we're looking at a very large portion, 51 acres, for this green space. And it is in alignment with uh, Council's plan to create more green space. And at the same time, we are going to respect uh, that it is going to be uh, kept as a natural preserve to protect the white lady slippers and that all uh, laws will be followed to ensure that it, you know, this endangered species is protected. So I'm quite excited about it and I think it's, it's important as a council too that we are going to be preserving this land. It is not going to be developed and we are going to do it in a thoughtful, correct way. So um, yeah, I look forward to if there is any other further consultations on this. And uh, we do have a national organization. The Natural uh, Conservatory of Canada is going to uh, 
be purchasing this property and maintaining it and the, and the city of brown and too is looking at an agreement to uh you know put funds into that too so we're going to hopefully do this thing properly and thoughtfully and, and done right so uh so anyways i i'm hoping council will support this and we'll move forward with uh with this important project thank you very much uh, councillor shaboy any other uh discussion anybody else want to weigh in before we call the question i'm not seeing any so i think we're ready for the question then all those in favor opposed that is carried. Thank you very much. Next item, please. Is the oh. uh, you're on sorry mute. there? Okay. I had yeah. an issue there. Uh, next up is the tender for the police interceptor utility vehicles, Your Worship. A motion would be in order. We do have administration that can answer questions once we get it on the table, I uh, would prefer. Councillor Cameron, go ahead. You're on mute. Oh, he is on mute. Oh, I got caught by it this evening, Your Worship. <laughs> <laughs> I move that the multi-year bid from Kelleher Ford Sales to supply six 2021 Ford Interceptor Utility Vehicles and four 2022 Ford Interceptor Utility Vehicles as per tender and specifications for the total price of $609,620.73 net of GST be accepted. Thank you. I believe Councillor Cullen has seconded that. Thank you. And... Um, now, I, I do believe we have our uh, procurement manager on the line if there are questions. I'm not sure if uh, Lindsay was planning on, on just making any comments or highlights for us or just here to answer questions. I can address questions if anybody has any, but I believe Curtis was going to present this evening. Okay, sorry about that. Our fleet manager... Uh, Mr. Vogel, and we would uh, be happy to have him come and give us some highlights. I'm not sure if he's on or not. Oh, here he comes. Your mic is muted. I don't know if you know that, but... Sorry, Rachel. It's having a little bit of there. Yeah, yep, yep, go ahead. Just um, here on behalf of Fleet to recommend that the multi year bid from Kelleher Ford here for the six 2021 Ford Interceptor Utility Vehicles and the four 2022 be accepted as per the tender and specifications. Thank you very much. I presume you'll uh, be able to answer questions. It's a uh, bit of a new approach. Uh, for us, uh, the department is uh, recommend trying a, a multi-year tender that will uh, provide us with uh, greater certainty and and uh, more timely delivery, so that we can uh, get them set up and, and ready to go. But uh, there may be some questions from council, uh, so we could uh, entertain them now if you have some. Councilor Fawcett. Yes, thank you. Uh, through to Curtis. Uh, one of the things sometimes with uh, vehicles, uh, particularly ones like these, where we're, there's a fair bit of work that has to get done. It's not like we're going to buy them off the lot. Um, do we expect uh, timing-wise to receive uh, what we're expecting in this year's budget, like in this year calendar year, or do you think there will be any? Is there ever delays, or what, what's our length of time to expect these vehicles? Uh, through your worship to the councillor, um, with I guess the way that COVID has affected things um, over the last year and, and so far into the part of this year, um, we're sort of <coughs> anticipating that this year will be uh, late third quarter. Um, but the real, I guess, direction is for 2022, we're, we're anticipating the first quarter 
um, for receiving the new items and we can sort of build off of that each year. That's the anticipation anyway. Yeah, okay. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other questions uh, of Mr. Vogel, Ms. Lurie? Looks fairly straightforward. So I think um, did the mover or seconder wish to speak? Uh, no, no, thank you, Your Worship. Okay, and it looks like we're good. I think we're ready for the question then. All those in favor? Opposed? That is carried. Thank you very much. And next item, please. Under the order of bylaws, Your Worship, bylaw number 7293, which is to rezone property located at 733 17th Street East. Okay, uh, whose word is it? Councillor Shaboye, go ahead, please. Thank you, Your Worship. I move that bylaw number 7293 to rezone properties located at 733 17th Street East. Uh, just hold on. From Development Reserve to Industrial General, be read a first time. Thank you. Seconder, please. Councillor Parker. And this is first reading, uh, just gets the process started, not normally debatable. So we're going to call for the question. All those in favor? And opposed? That is carried. Thank you. Next item, please. Giving of notice, Your Worship. Any giving of notice this evening? Not seeing any. Thank you. Next item, please. A motion to adjourn would be in order, Your Worship. Moved by Councillor Barry, seconded by Councillor Shaboye. Ready for the question. Uh, Councillor Lipke has his hand up. I'm not sure if he had a one of the questions. Maybe that was an area. He's voting in ahead of time here, I think. Okay, all those in favor? Opposed? That is carried. I thought maybe Councillor Lefty wanted to debate the motion. So <laughs> that looks like it's everything. Thank you very much. Uh, great meeting. And uh, again, it was a superb, uh, very uh, productive weekend. So thank you uh, to you all for uh, working so hard. So we'll see you soon. Thank you.